the essence of the universal receiver transmitter is that the data is sent serially. That means one bit at a time. The idle condition is a high or a 3.3 volts. And then the data, when it wants to send, begins with a start bit, which is low, which is always a, which is always a level zero. And then the bits are sent. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we're going to have a stop bit. And the stop bit is always high. These 10 bits together are called a frame. And so in one frame, we see we have 10 total bits. And encoded in those 10 total bits are eight data bits. The other aspect of this serial communication has to do with the time per bit. The time per bit is called the bit time, and one over the bit time is called the baud rate. And that is the total number of bits transmitted per second. As we saw in the last slide, the transmitter on the one computer is connected up to the receiver on the other computer. So this waveform here are the same on one side, the transmitter. So these 10 bits are output from the transmitter and input to the receiver. Well, so let's look at the transmitter. The transmitter has a 10-bit shift register, which is connected to the transmit data output pin. There are 10 bits in here. The start bit will come out first, and then bits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 will come out next, and lastly, the stop bit, which you know is a 1. And these 10 bits are loaded into this shift register. In order to make it happen, the software will write to the data register. So it's going to write to the data register. And this data register has the name UART0. This number can be a 0 through 7. Data register underline R. So it will write to this register. This 8 bits of data is then passed through a first in, first out hardware FIFO and sent into this shift register. Does that mean that um, there is a buffer between the data register you write to and the shift register that actually sends the data out? Yes. This is a 16 element buffer or first in first out queue that allows the software to write many data into this buffer and then they're sent out one at a time. There's one flag in this device that the software needs to know about and that is the transmit FIFO full flag. And this flag is one if this FIFO is full and can't accept any more data. And this flag is zero if it's not full and the software can write to the data register. Now, let's take a look at the receiver side of the transmission. On the receiver side, just like the sender side, there is a shift res register as well. This receiver shift register, shift register is also of the same size, which is 10 bits. There is your start bit and the stop bit and your payload, which is your data, which is 8 bits. Now, when, when the software wants to read data, it's going to perform the read on a data register, which we call UART 0, 
dr r and again this can this zero can be any number between zero and seven for the various u watts and we have a receiver FIFO which is also a, a 16 element buffer. The receiver is slightly complicated compared to the sender in that this is, when, we, when we receive data these 10 bits of data are taken and converted to the 8 bits of payload so every element here will have the 8 bits of raw data and 4 other bits these 4 bits are for indicating errors so we have what we call as an overrun error bit a break error bit a frame error bit and a parity error bit for now we will ignore the break error bit because we rarely use it but we'll talk about the overrun error bit remember that this is a 16 element buffer so when when data is being received and if the sender is sending too fast and if this buffer were to fill up this receiver will not have a place to put information so the overrun error bit is set to 1 to indicate indicate the buffer is full and we and some frame had to be dropped so now as far as the software is concerned um, it's going to use a different flag which is the receive buffer rxfe flag which is called the fifo empty flag so what this the receiver is going to do is it's going to repeatedly check this flag and as long as this flag is a zero which means that there's no data to be consumed it keeps looping if it's trying to do a busy wait and when this becomes a one we know that there's at least some data here so you can consume the data so the frame error is when there is a baud rate mismatch baud rate error which means that the sender and the receiver have not been configured with the same baud rate and the parity error is a thing of the past. We no longer use it. Um, it's, it's just there for continuity in the protocol.